Hey guys, we're back with part 4 from, for paper 4H from November 2007 for math. Okay, so for question 25, you're given this shape, and basically they're telling you the area of the shape is 11 centimeters squared, and you have to show that x squared minus 7x is equal, uh, plus 11 is equal to 0. So first of all, what is the area of the shape? We'll, we have to decide that. So we can divide the shape into two separate rectangles, so rectangle A and rectangle B. Now, the length of rectangle B is 4, and the width is x, right? Now, for this rectangle A, this length should be 3 minus x. Now, why is this? It's because this length is 3, and this length is x, so that means this length, uh, if I take this length, and I, if I take this length, and I subtract this length, x, I'll basically get this length, which is the length of the uh, length of a. So all you got to do is just like look at it, and uh, you it'll, you'll understand it. So this length is three minus x. So now let's find the area of rectangle a. The area of rectangle a is equal to the area of any rectangle is length times width, so it's three minus x times x which is equal to, uh, sorry, 3 minus x times x, which is equal to 3x minus x squared, right? Now, the, length, uh, the area of rectangle B is equal to length times width, and in this case, it's 4 times x, because the length is 4 and the width is x, so 4 times x, which is equal to 4x. Now, A plus B should give us the total area of the shape. So total area in this case is 11, a is 3x minus x squared, and b is 4x. So 3x minus x squared plus 4x should give me 11. So now let's just rearrange all of this. We get negative x squared plus 7x. We subtract 11 on both sides, we get minus 11 is equal to 0. But this is not still in the form we want it to be. We want x squared to be a positive number. So all we got to do is divide the whole thing by negative 1, and we'll get x squared plus, I mean, sorry, minus 7x plus 11 is equal to 0. And that's it. Next, you're being asked to solve y squared minus 7y plus 11 is equal to 0. Now, you can't just solve this using the simple factorization we've done earlier. You have to solve it using the quadratic formula, and that is minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now what is this a, b, and c? Basically, this value here, which is in this case 1, is the value of a. This value here, minus 7, is b. And this value here is c. So all you got to do is substitute it into this equation and you'll get your answer. So minus b, so minus, minus 7, plus minus square root of b squared, which is negative 7 squared, minus 4 times a, in this case is 1, times c, which is 11, all over 2 times a, which is in this case 1. So this simplifies to 7 plus minus 49 minus 44 over 2, which further simplifies to 7 plus or minus root 5 over 2. So y is equal to 7 plus or minus root 5 over 2. Now, all you got to do is split into the two separate possibilities, which is plus or minus. So it could either be, y could either be 7 plus root 5 over 2, or it could be 7 minus root 5 over 2. Now, just solve this separately on your calculator, and you'll get for this side 4.6180, which simplifies to 4.61, and this is to three significant figures like the question asks. And 7 minus root 5 will give 2.3819, which is just 2.38. And this is to three significant figures. And that's it. Okay, so basically from 25B, we got two values, 2.38 and 4.62. 25C is asking us to choose the, the answer to find the value of x in the diagram. So basically, we solved the previous question. We found two values of y. y is, and that equation is pretty much the equation we derived from the 25A. So we got two solutions, and we got to decide which one is correct for the x over here. So basically, 
it could either be 2.38 or 4.62. Now, if it was, was 2.38, it could be possible because it's smaller than 3. If it was 4.62, it's not possible because if you think about it, then this would be super long. It would be longer than this. And this would be even longer than this. So the whole shape would be messed up. So that means the correct answer should be 2.38. And now question D is asking you to give a reason for your answer. It's basically because x cannot be greater than 3. So x cannot be greater. x should be less than 3 basically. That's the reason. Because if it was greater than 3, because if greater, then the shape would be affected. Would change basically. This x can be applied to this shape. Okay. In question 26, they've basically given us a solid made of a cylinder, we'll call the cylinder A, and a cone B. And they're basically asking you to show that the total volume of the solid, which is the volume of A plus the volume of B, will be equal to the volume of, of a sphere of radius R. So now, look at the side notes. The note will just help you along the question. And all of these uh, formulas can be found on your formula sheet in the exam. So the volume of a cone is giving you the volume of a cylinder and the volume of a sphere. So the volume of the cone in this case, B, so the V of B is equal to 1 over 3 pi, oh sorry, 1 over 3 pi R squared H. Now in this case, the radius is R and it's pi R squared, so it's fine. And the height in this case, if you look at it, is R. So it's just R times R which becomes 1 over 3 pi r cubed. Now the volume of A is equal to, is a cylinder, A is a cylinder, so it's pi r squared h. So it becomes, in this case, the radius again is this r, so it's pi r squared, times the height again here is r, so r, which becomes pi r cubed. Now, the total volume of the solid should be A plus B. So it should be pi R cubed plus 1 over 3 pi R cubed. So now when you're adding this, pi R cubed stays constant. And over here it's kind of like 1 pi R cubed. So it's 1 plus 1 over 3, which is nothing but 4 over 3 pi R cubed. And so, that's the total volume. So now the volume of a sphere of sphere with radius r is nothing but 4 over 3 pi r cubed. And so, coincidence, because these two are equal. So you've proved it. Okay, so 26b, the last question. The curved surface area of a cylinder with base radius is to, they're basically giving you the formulas and they're being asked to show that the total surface area of the above solid, which is this solid, is greater than the surface area of a sphere with radius r. So first of all, what is the surface area, the total surface area of this solid? It's basically the curved surface area of the cone uh, of the cylinder, the curved surface area of the cone, and the bottom, the surface area of the circle at the bottom. So the curved surface area of the cone. Let's do that first. It's pi r l. So in this case, l is this length over here. It's this slant length, and you should know that it's greater than r for the reason that this, this, and this form a triangle and this is kind of like, l is like the hypotenuse so it should be greater than r so you know that l is greater than r and this will be helpful in the later stages so pi r l is the curved surface area of the cone then what is the curved surface area of the cylinder it's nothing but 2 pi r h, and h in this case is r, so it's 2 pi r squared. Now, the circle at the bottom, what is the surface area? It's nothing but the area of any normal circle, which is just pi r squared. Okay, so now the area, of, uh, uh, the surface area of a sphere with radius r is nothing but 4 pi r squared. So, if you look at these and you compare them, pi, it becomes, sorry, one sec, uh, pi r l plus 2 pi r, it, this just becomes 3 pi r squared, sorry, 3 pi r squared. 
Now, since L is greater than R, this plus 3 pi R squared should be greater than 4 pi R squared. Okay, I'll show you a better way of why. So, from this Pythagoras theorem, basically we can say L squared in this case is equal to R squared plus R squared, right? So, L squared in this case is equal to 2 R squared. So, L is nothing but square root of 2 R squared, which is equal to root 2 times R squared. So, we've proven that L is, equal, is greater than R squared. In fact, it's 2 root 2 times R squared. So, if we were to substitute this, uh, if we were to say that pi r times, pi r squared times root 2, since I just substituted it, plus 3 pi r squared, it should be greater than 4 pi r squared because r, because it's not just, uh, it's a bit hard to explain, it's not just r, it's not just r squared being added on to this. It's root 2 being times by this. So logic would tell you that it should be greater. It's a bit difficult to explain, but you have to really look at the numbers. And if you want, you can put in some numbers or practice it on your own. But it's like, I think it's very obvious like that it's greater. And all you really have to do is just show that uh, pi r l plus 3 pi r squared is greater than 4 pi r squared. Because l is greater than r or l is equal to root 2 times r or something like that and you can and they'll give you the marks for it but like if you really if you really don't understand it again post in the comment section please i'm open to any questions it's a bit difficult to explain and i'm sorry but yeah so that's it okay thanks a lot we're finally done with paper 4h from 2007 and now we can move on to 2008 hopefully and please comment rate subscribe to this channel and Feel free to ask any questions if you have any. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.